Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, hello friends. So I have been experimenting on deeper sleep states, um, getting more visualization in my dreams and connecting with my purpose. Um, this video is, is trying to get you to have the best experience you can by um, going deep. Now, we all heard about meditation spaces before. Go to a meditation room, go to your meditation space. Some people are a bit unlucky that they are surrounded by people and distractions, but I argued this, that your bedroom is, you gotta treat it like a temple, right? Minimalist, completely. <laughs> okay, I'm here in the city and um, you need to just not have anything in the room. So there's three rooms in this, this apartment and I'm dedicating this room only to sleeping and blacking out. So I have a blacked out um, blind that doesn't allow any light to come in at all. Um, I, don't ha I turn the Wi-Fi off. I make sure that my phone is on flight mode if I'm using it as, uh, as, a, as a music phone. So I have two phones. Um, one is on my normal phone and the other one is we have music like binaural beats and things like that. Um, when I've been working very hard, like long days, then I have that second phone as one where I listen to music and I have it for, I download things onto it from Disney Plus and, and Netflix and Gaia and they're like just short 20 minute episodes of things. So. There's an app that you can get on your phone, which is called Twilight. I really recommend that you download it. That's for Android users. For iPhone users, I think there's already a built-in thing for, for them, but you can go deeper with an app where you can really turn down the screen completely. Now, it's a bit like watching a black and white movie, but more in black and red, and on very, very low brightness. The blue peak of screens can keep you very awake and wired and alert, so you wanna have more of a, um, more of a red hue coming from the phone. So if you turn down the brightness completely up where you can almost not see it, you can just about see uh, your eyes, you know, adjust eventually. Um, so it's, it's mimicking what you would have in nature, having that sundown effect. Completely black out your room, turn all the lights off. And before getting into, like before sleeping, you need to sort of have a wind down where your body is no, you're telling your body that, okay, it's, it's dark now and we're gonna sleep and you will sleep deeper. Um, I have experimented with a bunch of herbs and everything so before coming into your meditation, like your sleep space or meditation space, whatever, the place where you come to rest, even if it's a siesta or you're having a nap, it, but long periods of sleeping where you have your replenished seven and a half, eight hours sleep, you don't want more and you don't want less. You want the optimum, you want the um, the Goldilocks zone of the sleep. You basically want to have, make sure you're not oversleeping and getting getting enough. So um, I've tried all different tools, all different techniques. What's out there? I might have missed a few. I don't know. I've tried all different types of herbs, everything that's legal. Um, so I've tried chamomile and valerian. Valerian doesn't work with me. It might, might work with you. But um, what really works now for me is honey mixed with some oat milk. Um, and you might think if, uh, if you're vegan and you, you're against that because, you know, whatever, try and push things away because, um, you know, try and push your beliefs away because honey is a powerful superfood, has, has so much in there. And, you know, try and get it locally if you can and it's being respected and you're not buying it from a shop, buy it from a farm shop or a local supplier. I have a farm just down the road. Get it from there, local honey. And I have it for one reason, is that it helps me with hay fever. So I don't get allergies anymore, um, which is great. But it, it seems to help me sleep. I've tried everything. Um, so yeah, if you're going to sleep and it's still light outside, you know, in parts of Europe, parts of the world possibly when it doesn't get dark till half 10 at night um, it's good to have shutters on your window installed if you can't get that then you can get magnetic um, strips that uh, you stick to your window frame and you just put a magnetic 
film up there which just blocks out light. And it's very easy to do. If you don't, if you don't, if you think you don't have the money for it, all you need is duct tape, cardboard, and a black bin liner. And if it's a, if it's a permanent installation, I really recommend just um, fitting the cardboard to the size of the glass and then just duct taping it to the window so no light gets in. You might think, well, you're not getting the sunrise effect. The thing is, if you're waking up in the dark, you don't need that. Um, and you can get alarms and lights which mimic the sunlight, but there's no point in that. I think once your sleep is done, it's done. And if you set an alarm, seven and a half hours, eight hours, you're okay. So getting the optimum sleep, there's tons of tools out there. You're probably thinking, what have you done wrong? Um, <laughs> a big thing is caffeine. Um, caffeine is not just in coffee, but there is small parts of it in, well, it's relative, the cacao bean in chocolate. So if you're having chocolate after 12, after midday, if you're sensitive like me, it can affect you. So if you're having problems, that is uh, one thing. Now, all these things I'm telling you about is for a person who has, there's no stress going on, there's no worries. That is another subject completely. Um, all these tools and techniques I find to have a much better sleep. Sleeping on your own is can be better unless you are with a partner who doesn't roll over and snore and any distraction, you know. So I think it's really healthy to have your own separate sleeping areas for, for rejuvenation and sleep, you know. And if you one of you wakes up early, go and share the bed with the other person. But I think that's a really Im important thing to, to do because it's, it's, it's your own recharge center where you get in rest. Um, so, you know, going back to the partner thing, don't think I'm crazy, it's just try it, you know. It doesn't doesn't mean that you're separated, it's just, it's nice to share that first, I don't know, little while to, together in bed, but then you can separate. Different subject, obviously, it doesn't work for everybody, some, it can trigger people. So if you're feeling that trigger, triggeringness, if that's a word, <laughs> then it's probably triggering you there, I don't know. But this is stuff for solo uh, sleepers what, what I'm talking about is no distractions in the room if you have distractions in the room it can keep your mind awake keep you active if you have a partner next to you perhaps other things are going on but if you're really aligned if you get wrong really well if there's no drama if there's no difficulties if you're not triggering each other then it can work really really well so um, for example me and my partner we got on really good and sleep fine no problems um, it's like sleeping next to myself, really. We're very aligned. Um, so there's a bunch of tools out there enabling you to get get deeper in sleep. There's earthing mats. There's weighted blankets to keep you more tucked in because we are highly conditioned as, as adults and young adults and older adults as we get older that, you know, the first seven years of our life, you know, if we've been tucked in a certain way or we don't have a weight over us, it depends on your conditioning and how your your caretaker when you're younger your your parent figure I wouldn't just say parents because it's not always parents that look after us when we're younger it could be un uncles or grandfathers grandmothers whoever put us to sleep in our bed in our cot then they might have done it a certain way they might have padded the duvet around us the blanket they might have put something heavy over us some might not have done that in hotter countries um colder climates yeah, you probably have a lot more padding. So you can get weighted blankets that sort of just seal you into the bed. And um, yeah, so there's many, to there's so many tools out there. You can put um, a bit of essential oil burning in the room before you enter, like a bit of rosemary, uh, not rosemary, that's to help keep you more awake for lucid dreaming, different subject there. Um, like lavender um, and other relaxing um, herbs like that just fill the room a little bit if you have access to a an air con system in your room if you're in a hot country or um if your room gets very stuffy make sure you have the window open in the summertime it can do the opposite effect because you're bringing warm air into the room but the the temperature of the room is very and very important because although your body temperature drops you require a cool environment for you to sleep so if you are in a hot stuffy room with the radiator on all night really recommend you turn it down a notch. It's okay to be cool as long as, you, as, long as you're not freezing and you, your bones off in your bed, then um, you're okay. As long as it's not frost and you can't see your breath in the room, you're all right. 
but you do we do need a cool environment to help us sleep at the moment i'm in the city this place is soundproofed i've got the shutters on the windows it's really good um there's no distractions and this is probably the peak of the day in the evening it gets it gets a bit more quieter so i'm quite happy with this um in the room tonight i will be listening on uh, a bluetooth speaker because i'm traveling however at home i much prefer more, more something analog that doesn't use a bluetooth frequency that plugs in um, to a, another music phone that i have now i really love old sony phones and old Huawei phones and other old phones that have an SD card holder in there. That way I can put loads and loads of different songs on there. But a current I'm using an old phone and I can just, it's got a capacity of 130 gigabytes on there. So I can transfer a load of binaural beats, um, isochronic tones that are in the room and I have that all night. It's very, very low in the background, a bit of a hum, quite very relaxing for me. I really enjoy it. And I've been using this, um, these tracks, I've been experimenting with all different tracks for the past four years and one of them is um, from a uh, YouTuber, I think the Lucid Mage, I think her name is, she makes all these lovely tracks, they're about 11 hours long, don't worry, you don't have to listen to it for that long, but it, you know, if you do need more sleep at some time in your life, it's there. Um, but I only managed may, maybe seven, seven and a half, and it's really good because I start it from the beginning and when I've finished in the morning, I'm, I can track how much sleep I've had rather than trying to, you know, work out how much sleep I've had so I can keep more track of my sleep. So I said, there's there's so many tools out there, but this is what works for me. A core environment room, make sure it's completely blacked out, no distractions, don't have a TV in here, don't, you know, have, I don't really chill out in here, do other things other than maybe get dressed or um, sleep. <laughs> Um, what I don't have with me today is I usually have a notebook literally by my side of my bed. It's, it's a half an A4 size, so it's what, A, A5, and um, I have a pen there ready on a blank bit of paper, and I, I can write in the dark, okay? Um, and this is just jotting dreams down, again, another video, but that's what I have in the room. Um, Another research, what I found out very recently, is uh, the quality of clothing and material and the bedding of what you encase your physical uh, meat suit in, your body. Um, and there was a study done, I can't remember the whole results and the whole story, so apologies, but everything is there on the internet if you want to search, I'll probably put a link down below. Possibly if I missed that, please remind me, because um, I don't usually go back and listen to my videos. Um, so there's some research done where they found that linen had the highest frequency rating on the body and then it was cotton and then it was like bamboo and other things and the lowest was um, polyester. Now polyester is plastic. Think about it, do you want to be wearing a plastic bag when you go to sleep? You're going to be feeling uncomfortable, probably sweating. So what I have is um, a cotton t-shirt because I couldn't find linen, well I could, but didn't really like the style, and I have linen trousers, and I find my legs can be a bit, get a bit frustrated sometimes at night. Underwear the same cotton, and cotton and linen seems to have a high, they, they measured the, the body of people wearing, um, wearing different types of clothing, and they found that um, people who were, wore like linen, uh, cotton, had a more high vibrational frequency uh, recorded in their body that it was healthy uh, compared to those who are wearing polyester and um, rayon and stuff which is mixture of other plant fibers but it wasn't responding to the body properly and it mimicked people who were pretty much unwell and dead so um, in your unconscious state when you are asleep then um, you are putting yourself in that state of a lower vibration now, I'm not being all like conspiracy and fluffy hippie, like, you know, like, oh, you have to be careful what you wear. It's just good to be in more natural, um, surrounding yourself in natural materials when you are in sleep. The bedding, I don't know what I've had here because um, it's not my place. I'm, yeah, renting. So just for a short time. 
um, so I don't know I haven't checked the the quality but at home I have I have a um, feathered down quilt um, duvet um, I am vegan but the thing is you know I really like the the heaviness of the the feathers the, the down and encased in the quilt cover is a hundred percent Egyptian cotton it's like a 800 uh, double threaded or something so it's it's kind of soft and it's you know natural material same as the um, the, the pillowcase and the bottom sheet and everything and uh, yeah I, I, since I'm changing that I've been sleeping much better so yeah it's a bit difficult <laughs> for me as a um, quite a sensitive individual um, I can see lights and energies in the room um, spirits etc um, guides and other other anomalies happening when I'm asleep so even though my room is blacked out at home and here I do wear an eye mask when I go to bed um, it's also a bit of a comfort now which I enjoy um, I don't like to use it either I do have um, Bluetooth headphones now I use these in emergencies if I'm traveling and they're really helpful to get a better sleep it just cuts out all sound I don't really like using them all the time because it's not good for the brain. I don't know, don't know really having a frequency in between your head while you sleep. Some people say it's not a problem, but I think for long-term use, the same as cell phones, mobile phones next to, next to your head is probably not a great idea. So um, tonight I will be having them plugged in. Um, but if there is a bit of noise I will have headphones on but usually in my room if it's very quiet then I just have a have a, a speaker on this is my traveling Bluetooth speaker by JBL really good brand these are really good charges up last all night and I have it the other side of the room away from my body away from my head and it just puts that frequency in in the room to help me uh, sleep and dream very very deeply so I've been I spent a lot of money the past four years I've done a lot of research, read a lot of articles, also the help of Lance Carter from Roxiva.com. Um, he's done a lot of research on sleep, but I've been my own guinea pig really. I've tried all the techniques that I've read on that website, as well as doing my own research and what feels right. This is what works for me. This might not work for you, but a lot of things come into play, especially diet. So if you are eating chocolate before you go to bed, if you are having a coffee or tea, um, or something that's energizing before you sleep, don't do it try not to have it eight hours before you sleep it can affect your brain your body um, also another drink that I tried a while back is I got from Holland and Barrett which I found which was lion's mane lacuma ashwagandha really good herb and turmeric um, powder mixed up with some oat milk honey it's, it's a life changer it's great it's helping me sleep very very deeply and for a lot longer periods of time so I think I pretty much covered everything. Another thing to mention, which I don't have with me when I travel, um, just because I don't want them to break, they're not too expensive, but they're red plastic glasses. Not seeing glasses, you just put them on and it, they're like sunglasses, but they cover your whole, whole vision. And at the moment I'm going for The Simpsons. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but watching something a bit funny and comical before you go to sleep put, puts you in a bit of a more positive state of mind when you wake up. If you're watching thrillers and horrors and stuff before you sleep, you can be putting yourself in a bit of a negative of frame of mind. And I don't know, personally, I don't really want to be waking up in that frame of mind. So I just like to watch something ridiculous when I sleep. That's my preference. Um, there's a lot of seasons of The Simpsons. I'm not going to talk too much about The Simpsons, but there's about 35 seasons, I think. It's been going on for many years since I was a little boy. And I never watched them all when I thought, well, okay, I'm going to get through them all. I'm on season 13 now, and it's taken about two years, I think. Um, it's taken some time. Watch one episode before I sleep. It works wonders. It just, I don't always finish it. I might manage 15, 10 minutes. It depends how I feel, but it's nice to unwind and just not think about anything. So, um, yeah, those are the tools and things I've done to really have a better night's sleep. Important thing is that your mind is your biggest obstacle because if you have a lot on your mind stresses strains um, issues with people work finances whatever it takes a lot of willpower to put all that out the way and have time dedicated for you to rest 
So that's one big area that can really overcome everything else. So if you don't have any stress in your life, if you feel really relaxed, then it's most likely something in your lifestyle that is preventing you from sleep. Could be a health disorder, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, I'm not, for the safety of this video, I'm not requiring you to take any medication or prescribing anything, you know, do it your own research if you want, but this, this is the things that work well for me. Good quality of clothing, soundproof, quiet, dark room, no distractions, time for me to recharge, and um, no clutter in the room. There's so much, but those are the things that work for me. And having the oat, honey, lacuma, ashwagandha drink I have before I go to bed, maybe like 45 minutes before I sleep, and it's digested then, I pee, and then I can sleep like a baby. Hopefully a baby sleep well. So yeah, I thought I'd share my uh, research um, for the past four years or so. This is what works for me. Hope it's helped you in some way. And um, I'll speak to you in another video.